Hello everyone, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Santi Indra Astuti, you can call me Santi. I'm from Indonesia, from a community-based organization called Mafindo or Masyarakat Anti-Fitnah Indonesia. So today I would like to share to you about Indonesia and the state of infodemic and how we try to fight the infodemic. So a quick look about Indonesia. Uh, we are a big country. We are located in equatorial line, equatorial line in uh, Asia part. We comprises of 13,677 uh, islands. We also have a big population. So our population right now is 266.91 million. Uh, and about 64% of it is internet users, still a big number. So uh, this is our digital profile in 2020 based on our recent data. Uh, the internet user in Indonesia is 64% and we spend a lot of time in internet, uh, in digital platform. So you can see that about seven hours, 59 minutes, nearly eight hours spent on the digital platform. Uh, our internet profile is, uh, internet profile user is growing. Uh, and uh, the social media users in Indonesia are also high. We have 160 million of social media users. It means 59% of our population. Uh, Indonesians spend about uh, 3 hours and 43 minutes daily in social media users. What they, uh, what they do in a uh, digital platform, watching online videos, 99%, and then watching vlogs, 79%. We love to hear music. So thank you very much, Liz, for giving us a list of Spotify because it's also one of the most popular in Indonesia. We love music so much. Listens to music streaming is also uh, the third uh, largest activities of Indonesia right now. YouTube considers very popular in Indonesia, followed by WhatsApp, Facebook, and uh, also Instagram. Okay, enough about Indonesian profile. And now I would like to share to you about Indonesia and the health misinformation problems in the country. Actually, there is nothing new with health misinformation in Indonesia. Two years ago, we have an incident where a massive vaccination campaign against measles and rubella in Indonesia is in health. Uh, the vaccination rate is drops from 95% to 68% in the second phase. Oh, I'm talking about the vaccination of measles and rubella. This is because a fatwa uh, declared by the uh, Indonesian Ulama Council in Jakarta um, declaring that the vaccine is haram or forbidden under Islamic law because big component is suspected to, uh, to be used in its manufacturing. For those who are not really familiar with Islamic terms, a degree means uh, a fatwa means a degree released by the ulema for their followers. As an Islamic followers, I have to obey the ulema, uh, the fatwa no matter what and this is happened in indonesia when uh, the massive campaign of uh, mmr is happening and the result is clearly uh, devastated what happened in the campaign and the incident uh, in the previous slide is actually reflected a long battle between uh, two groups of uh, anti-fax and pro-fax in Indonesia. So this is the data that uh, 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 displayed uh, that battle between two groups. The red dot represent the anti-fax and the blue dot represent the pro-fax group. The silent majority here, the green one, is actually the game changer of this uh, situation but you can also see that over the years there is a growing followers of the anti fax due to their uh, tactical strategical and clever uh, and aggressive uh, campaign uh, uh, so this is pose a problem in indonesia so uh, regarding the pandemic uh, covid 19 is uh, 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 officially declared in Indonesia in February and coronavirus cases in Indonesia is uh, growing high right now. 
uh, we are ranked 21 in the world but ranks number one in ASEAN countries. Uh, the number of the recovered patients is uh, growing high but actually the active cases every day the uh, number of people get infected also uh, growing each day so that's why Indonesia is still has uh, in a long battle with the COVID-19. Mm, what also uh, for me is uh, very sad is the fact that health workers do deaths due to the COVID-19 is uh, 21 uh, for each uh, 100,000 uh, uh, 100, of health workers. So this is pose a great number. So we have uh, problems with the battle uh, Profec and Antifax. We also have uh, problems, of course, in pandemic. And now in the uh, uh, in the uh, uh, crisis, we also have uh, this infodemic. So I would like to share about the proliferation of hoax or uh, infodemic during the pandemic. Okay, first of all, before I share to you about the hoax of uh, COVID-19 in Indonesia, I would like to share to you about how older population in Indonesia receive COVID-19 information. This is very important because we can see that uh, the older population here are the people who uh, have a high risk uh, or bigger risk uh, in terms of pandemic. So older population in Indonesia uh, may use different sources of information. You can see here that 89% uh, are watching television, uh, gaining from uh, television much information about COVID-19, 58% from friends and family, and 46% from social media. Misinformation in Indonesia about COVID-19 is like a tsunami. Almost everyone has received it. They admit to have it. But you can see based on this uh, survey the, about the awareness of receiving hoax, uh, most likely 30% stated that they never uh, uh, receiving hoax means that they are not aware of receiving hoax. Uh, 30 uh, 30% 30 is a huge number for Indonesian. And this is also the data about uh, online conversation driven by retweets. Yeah, you can see that the distribution types of tweets here in the last uh, three months here. Uh, as it can be seen, the main driver of the overall activity is made of retweets, which means that the main conversation is shaped by a relatively small number of influencers but uh, they are posed to be uh, very influential. Uh, their posts also widely amplified by their followers. The dynamic RRI in the last three months, here the data, so the dynamic pattern of infodemic risk shows substantial variability, further suggesting a far from stable situation, despite of the relatively low infodemic profile, which seems to be open to many possible future scenarios for good or for bad. Uh, talking about uh, the level of infodemic risk, it is not always associated with socioeconomic level, but in terms of uh, infodemic risk among um, uh, neighboring countries, Indonesia has high infodemic risk compared to the Philippines. Uh, since January, we uh, are collecting hoax about COVID-19 uh, in Indonesia. So uh, the hoax about uh, health misinfodemic is represented by the red lines and the non-health uh, hoax topic is represented in the blue line. So you can see that a surge of hoaxes at the beginning uh, of the uh, outbreak, uh, it gaining uh, uh, bigger. Uh, getting bigger in the uh, around March to April and declining again uh, in the next uh, month, but still has a relatively big number. The exact number of the hoaxes uh, regarding COVID-19 will be described in the next uh, slides. Uh, in Mavindo, we uh, also classified uh, hoaxes, hoaxes about uh, COVID-19 that we debunk based on certain topics. So we have um, a hoax topic 
uh, on vaccine, government response and policy behavior, conspiracy theory also at play, treatment and drugs, infection and transmission. So, so you may see here that a uh, big number of uh, uh, the topic of uh, COVID-19 hoax is about government response and policy and also about infection and transmission but uh, right now as the uh, rumor about vaccination is coming uh, you can see that uh, the hoaxes about uh, vaccine slowly is increasing uh, so reported hoaxes mostly spread via facebook and whatsapp using image to convince viewers but uh, my concern here uh, is that uh, the fact that uh, the hoaxes uh, are delivered or spread through WhatsApp, many of it is without any uh, claim of evidence, just text only. But people still do believe it and share it anyway. Uh, this is the data about reported hoaxes uh, originated internationally across topic. But those related to government response are mostly domestic. You can see here that a high percentage uh, of the hoaxes are uh, uh, extracting or talking about a domestic uh, situation. And uh, this mostly attacking the government. Okay, in the previous slides, I give you the hoax uh, composition. Uh, in terms of percentage, but this is the number of the reported COVID-19 hoaxes as collected and debunked by our fact checkers. So we have uh, we start with 19 in January, and going on uh, the top uh, 158 uh, during uh, in March, uh, mostly about uh, uh, transmission and government responses and uh, people or area which get infected. And right now, uh, it is going, do uh, going down slowly uh, to 37, mostly about vaccination here. Around uh, 600 uh, reported hoaxes has been collected uh, by our fact checkers. Uh, this is uh, the most popular hoaxes about COVID-19 in Indonesia, from incidents to Wuhan, hard boiled egg, and microchip inside the vaccine. I will tell you later about this. So this is a uh, hoax about how uh, local authorities, police in China, trying to uh, stop uh, a suspected positive COVID patients who are trying to escape uh, during the scenario of lockdown. Uh, this is uh, uh, this was uh, uh, circled around uh, us in around uh, February to March, and has a uh, uh, and very popular at that time. Okay, regarding this hoaxes, this is very local. I think you won't uh, see this in any other countries or in your uh, country. Uh, so, uh, this, hoaxes, this hoaxes talking about a baby born at midnight and this baby who just born uh, uh, can talk and speak. Uh, the baby is reported uh, was reported uh, talking to people. Please, if you want to save uh, your family from coronavirus, then give them uh, a hard boiled egg. And people in that area, uh, in uh, several city in Sulawesi, just uh, swarming around the market at midnight uh, to find uh, and uh, and to buy hard boiled eggs. Can you imagine? But this is one of the notable hoaxes in Indonesia. Uh, another very popular hoaxes is about a suspected microchip in a vaccination. Why this microchip is implanted in the vaccine program? Because uh, according to that hoax, uh, hoaxes, uh, the, the hoax, it is because uh, the government has a evil scheme to uh, eradicate uh, 7.5 Muslim population in the country. Wow. So what is the trends and major challenge that we face right now regarding the hoax of COVID-19? Okay, we see a decreasing in quantity but increasing in quality, severity and its urgency. Hoax actors have various motivation from mental issue, money, uh, and to all celebrity effort to gain attention, this, this exposure 
this potential new business so more and more influencers uh, are now uh, 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 swarming in the social media and suddenly they became an expert of COVID-19. Netizens are fed up and began to confront hoax actors and messes. The major challenge to tackle the problem is comes from long time polarization that is still haunted the country after long battle of uh, politics in the general election. We have also poor level of literacy among the people, uh, uncoordinated public communication regarding the COVID-19 response, and also partisan media. Poor quality of journalism practice are also reported. So we have problems, we have major challenges, but also we have social capital. So uh, after a massive campaign against hoaxes started in 2016, right now we have a high awareness on hoaxes. Okay, we still have this uh, low level of literacy, but awareness on hoaxes is relatively high. Indonesia uh, also has a, a notable uh, in social cohesion. We rank very high on the focus of the common good. It means that we have high solidarity and helpfulness, uh, respect for social rules, and also civic participation. This is uh, associated with the strong tradition of community engagement in Indonesia. We have uh, a traditional value, but it's still uh, implanted, it's still uh, uh, became part of the today's uh, norms. Uh, it is called Gotong Royong or community engagement. Gotong Royong is inherently in Indonesian values. Also, it creates voluntarism and collectivism to do good. So, social cohesion and also uh, a notable norms uh, inherently in uh, Gotong Royong community engagement. No wonder in people we trust. So in the next slide, I will talk, talk to you about building community engagement. Okay, speaking about community engagement, now I want to talk to you about uh, uh, Bafindo or Masyarakat Antifitna Indonesia, a community-based organization which I belong to. Started from a Facebook group, right now we are uh, growing to be a NGO. We have 85,000 of uh, member in the Facebook group, but right now about 500 volunteers are recorded uh, as part of Mafindo in the uh, NGO. Uh, we have 17 chapters all around Indonesia. Uh, uh, this group of volunteers are actively right now engaged with uh, the local authorities and local community uh, in the fight against hoaxes and also uh, against this infodemic. Uh, this is the core ideas uh, why we set up or establish Mafindo. It is start from uh, the core ideas that society problems such as hoaxes should be fixed by the society itself. Uh, we help uh, help avoid legal action because it cannot scale with the problem. Uh, avoid as much government intervention as possible. By that way, we maintain our credibility and our independency. Ensure freedom of speech and freedom of expression by avoiding the need to censorship by government. By this way, we try to uh, maintain a good relationship and strengthen press freedom as well and empower people to combat hoaxes. So this is an overview of our programs from crowdsourced fact-checking, giving training, doing media campaign, developing tools and materials. We develop tools for help people uh, uh, identifying fake news and also we giving training uh, for uh, local government, for teacher, for uh, others in health sector also. Uh, we have collaboration with other partners as well from develop curriculum to giving training and also doing campaign. The Mafindo roadmap for action is actually um, adopting the inoculation model. So we see that hoaxes is became the virus in the field. Uh, to fight the virus, we need the antivirus. It is a hoaxbuster. 
uh, also law enforcement, restorative justice, and also we need vaccine in uh, to empower people in long-term battle. And this is the literacy, digital information, and also media literacy. So this is the MEFINDO roadmap for action based on inoculation model. But now we are uh, having a huge problem with this pandemic. So fighting infodemic is not a usual, uh, usual business that we do. We need counter narration. We need fast action network. And also we're trying to uh, boost our um, uh, volunteers in the field with uh, personal development uh, because they need more to do more in the field. So this is our infodemic responses uh, since the out outbreak coming, the pandemic coming in Indonesia. First COVID-19 hoax debunk on 24th January 2020. At that month, we only collected and have uh, a gaining report of 19 hoaxes, only 19. But uh, in the following months, it uh, getting higher and higher. We also uh, collaborate with Kawal COVID-19 community on 1st March uh, 2020 created COVID-19 hoax task force, join Indonesia, uh, Indonesian COVID-19 task force and coordinate with task force and national police on high risk hoaxes. Also part of um, our infodemic responses is significantly prioritize MAF industry research team and capacity and capability. So uh, understanding that uh, the problem of Indonesia, also the digital gap around uh, communities in Indonesia. We are also participate in offline campaigns uh, started by our volunteers, but also uh, opening uh, collaboration with other uh, as well, such as offline campaigns uh, with Ayola One COVID-19 ID. Uh, in uh, many ways, we are also supporting other organization campaign. I will talk to you later about this. Uh, uh, and mainly what we do is uh, advocate all parties on the danger of black related toxins since the beginning and rally all parties to prioritize this issue. Uh, this is an example of information protocol private to COVID-19 that we built for volunteers and this is followed by capacity building. This protocol is asking uh, people to con carefully consider uh, the information that they receive uh, and try to identify uh, the sources, uh, whether it is hoax or not, and try to hold themselves, not uh, to share it instantly, though it seems very, very important. Okay, uh, another program that also uh, organized by our volunteers is a small scale community engagement called Chantelan. This is happened in Jakarta. Uh, uh, you see that uh, during the first weeks of um, uh, lockdown, people get frustrated, especially poor family in the urban city because uh, their income is lost. So uh, uh, Chantelan means a uh, bag. Uh, contained with uh, raw food and essentials for life attached in the fences. People can freely take it uh, if they need it. So uh, Puji organized this uh, activity as a charity event. Uh, uh, she and uh, her friends provide a bag of uh, food and other essentials for life and attach it in the fences. So you can see that people here uh, mostly are housewife uh, queuing to take that. And during this process, Puji and other volunteers uh, uh, educate others, uh, educate a housewife about the importance of hearing valid information and also uh, asking them to always uh, maintaining and obey the protocol of COVID-19. This small, small scale community engagement getting bigger and getting lar larger and attract others to also participate in the, in the activities. So from small scale community engagement, we move to city scale community engagement. This is uh, initiated by uh, our volunteers in Yogyakarta. We, uh, our volunteers uh, organize a campaign as a guardian of the city. Uh, guardian for what? Guarding city uh, to build uh, resilience among people. 
uh, against the pandemic and infodemic. So this is happening in Yogyakarta in the first week of August. Uh, 2020 uh, within this week uh, there is a closure of the city uh, the center of the city became the center uh, of the uh, campaign for staying safe and also by this way uh, asking people also to fight the infodemic as well so uh, uh, briefly to say that uh, to fight the infodemic uh, there's no one way that works to uh, to be magic uh, cure for every problem. Uh, we need whole brain engaged, and uh, for us it means maximizing social capital. Maximizing social capital means upscaling the collaborations. So uh, the factors uh, that we have to maintain is trust, resilience, and also sustainability in international level, regional, and national. How to do it? Collaboration between media, social media orchestration, uh, government, health institution, education institution, so, uh, civil society, and international organization as well. This is what we mean with upscaling the collaboration. To fight the misinfodemy, infodemy needs works together. So this is also other campaign that uh, initiated by local government, by the RCCE group, and also by other civil society organization like uh, JAPELIDI or Jaringan uh, Pegiat Literasi Digital. It means a network of uh, digital literacy activists. Indonesia is a big country with uh, so many ethnic groups. So it is important also to, uh, uh, to formulate uh, our campaign uh, addressing this uh, situation. Uh, what uh, Japelidi do here is very iconic because they're doing their campaign uh, by translating the material of the campaign to 43 uh, local languages in Indonesia. By that way, they can uh, address uh, and they can also reach many, many uh, uh, ethnic uh, uh, ethnic group in Indonesia. They're doing their campaign uh, online and also offline, whether when it is possible. So, what's our plan next? How will we work in the future? The idea of social inoculation is uh, promoted by one of uh, our friends here, uh, uh, and since um, uh, uh, July, uh, since June, we uh, built a, a, a working group to uh, further discuss about the social inoculation. Uh, I don't want to uh, talk to you much about it. Uh, I just want to share to you this slide because, tada! We I'm, I'm very fond with this uh, icon, the badak corn, uh, 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 as the uh, hybrid of uh, super unicorn and super team that will be trying to fight the infodemic with a social inoculation way. Understanding that data is the key in social inoculation approach, this is our future plan. First of all, we right now is preparing research on KAP, preparing design message intervention based on the KAP, and also trying to monitoring narration. Uh, in the second phase, in the second step, we will building dashboard. Uh, dashboard to monitoring the evolving narration, uh, tracking misinformation, and also tracking behavior changing, uh, responding to the upcoming vaccination. Well, that's all my presentation today. Uh, I'm talking about the state of infodemic in Indonesia and how we try to uh, fight the infodemic by uh, building community engagement in very small scale. Mafindo is uh, uh, just one of others community who try to fight this pandemic and also try to build resilience people against the infodemic. Uh, 
um, however small we are, I do believe that uh, what we do is uh, cont uh, significantly contribute in the uh, uh, solution to the problem because uh, whether uh, it is not about uh, big on and small, uh, it is about how we try to uh, giving uh, contribution and how we try to uh, uh, become an agent uh, game changers in the effort as you too. Thank you very much. So any advice, comments and suggestion, any question we can share uh, in the next session. Also, uh, you can uh, share it to me uh, through my email. I'm also part of uh, this group. Together we care, unicorn rules.